We are back on the record. We are back on the record at the regularly scheduled meeting of the Nevada, Nevada Taxi Cab Authority Board meeting for October 26th. And we were, uh, when we had uh, technical difficulties on agenda item two, and the only public comment so far had been mine. And um, Member Thompson was in his. I have one more sentence to give. And this, and Member Thompson would like to provide one more sentence to his comment. <laughs> Should I see any of you in the future realize that I'm not going to recognize you? I do not recognize faces. So please introduce yourself, and I'll remember your name, of course. But faces are just completely. I can't even watch movies without my wife telling me, who is that? <laughs> That's all I have. Thank you. Is there any other public comment to come before the board at this time? Seeing none, um, we'll go to agenda item three. This is uh, the time set forth for industry discussion. Um, there is a discussion item, I think, that you placed on here. I placed a discussion item on the agenda, but I'm going to move that discussion item to you. What? Which one? Which one? Which discussion item? There's a couple of them. That I put on. You have a discussion item on Las Vegas parking enforcement. That will go to November because they could not uh, accommodate our rescheduled meeting time. So I want to move that item to uh, the November, November meeting. meeting. Is there any other industry discussion or comments uh, that members of the industry would like to make at this time? Seeing uh, an overwhelming rush to the table, <laughs> uh, we will go to agenda item four, which is staff report. This report, from. this report may be a little longer than usual in terms of what's happening because I have to wear probably three or four different hats. We do not have an administrative attorney at this time, nor do we have an administrative assistant. The administrative assistant left yesterday. So my legal department is a little bereft at this particular point, and I am the legal department at this particular point. So that report I will be giving too, along with all the other things that I'm that I'm doing at this particular point. So one of the things I wanted to discuss was there was a uh, issue in June and July as to uh, the number of rides versus revenue was. Uh, seemed to be out of whack because it seemed that we were getting more revenue even though the trip rides were down. Uh, that, seemed to have, that seems to have corrected itself in September in that the rides uh, are increasing and over month to month basically they are showing that the number of rides and revenue are going up in the same direction which is something that should be happening. I think that what had happened over the time before is because of the monies that we were collecting relative to credit card fees, as well as our PS charges that caused the revenue to increase, uh, even though the rides did not. Uh, I think that was the reason for that that situation. And uh, now that it seems to be going in the right direction, I'm pleased that it's doing that at this at this particular point. An interesting point that exists right now is that when we had a hearing here. On the independent cab operation, one of the information that was presented to the board was the driver issue versus uh, the number of medallions that we have. At this particular point, we have 3,530 active medallions, but I have learned from my licensing staff that we now have 4,000 licensed drivers in the system. So we have more licensed drivers than medallions in the system as of this point. Uh, that's a good thing in terms of where we are at this particular point in terms of driver shortage. I believe that we probably still have a driver shortage, but uh, we seem to be moving in the right direction relative to that. Uh, we also are moving in the right direction relative to revenue per trip. We're averaging about $19 per trip. Uh, that seems to be holding uh, relative to the employee drivers. Interestingly enough, Virgin Valley seems to be doing very well in terms of revenue per trip relative to lease drivers, because I believe that their number is somewhere in the vicinity of $20 and 35 cents uh, per ride. So uh, kudos to Mr. Balaban in terms of his operation of Virgin Valley. Uh, in terms of 
the I'm going to move into the compliance report in terms of citations and violations at this particular point. In September, we wrote a total of 95 uh, citations and 99 violations. And it's interesting to note that the number of violations that we're talking about from September 1 to September, September 30 is that a majority of the violations dealt with a by obeying the laws of safety, comfort, and convenience, which means basically a violation of traffic law. So that was a majority. Other citations that were written and the other ones were uh, miscellaneous citations in terms of other areas relative to uh, citations that were given for the month. Uh, so we were not here in August. Uh, basically, uh, that number is for September 1 through September 30th. I don't know if I have on. August numbers are in here. August number number of citations written was down. We, we wrote 99 in September. In August, we wrote 31. There may be a reason why September number is a little bit different, is that we also instituted uh, for this month a uh, we basically have a night shift or at least this month. The reason why I instituted a night shift is was a, it was a experiment because I need data as to what exactly was happening relative to the night time between 10 p.m. and 3 a.m. So I put officers on that shift. It seems that the information that I have received preliminarily from those officers is that we have written more citations during that shift than written both in our day and swing shifts. So that seems to be a shift that we need to continue. And I will be asking for that shift to be reinstated relative to the legislative session that's coming up in 2023 in order to get additional officers so that we can staff that shift. We had not been staffing that shift since COVID and uh, now we are staffing that shift. But I'm going to probably end the experiment uh, as of November 1 and look at the data on that and see where we are at this particular point. In terms of monthly vehicle inspections, we did in September a total of 192 annual inspections. We cleared 142 accidents. We issued 133 24-hour holds, and total holds we issued is 151. And now I have something in terms of for a personal note in terms of what's happening. Vice Chairman Thompson, you've been with us for six years. You've only been with me for about six months. I've appreciated the time that you spent the time in terms of the uh, thoughtfulness that you use in terms of everything that you do relative to the board and we appreciate your time. Katana, do you have something to give him for our uh, appreciation of his time on the board. Yes, you have a certificate. Well, I am astonished. <laughs> Please. From the State of Nevada Department of Business and Industry, a certificate of recognition presented to Roger Thompson in recognition to your commitment to public service through your outstanding efforts as a board member with the Taxi Cab Authority. Thank you for your contributions and dedication to the traveling public. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. And after, and after this meeting, we're also going to have taken the honor of uh, Vice Chairman Thompson, but I truly appreciate from the bottom of my heart your dedication to this board and dedication to the industry. Thank you. You are celebrating my leaving, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm working, I'm working toward a new, uh, a, a new endeavor in terms of what you're going to do with the time that you no longer have to spend with us. Steve. On that, yes. right. on the on agenda item four, are there any questions of the administrator on staff? Yes. Yes. Um, I, I know it's um, confidential specifically, but the um, concept is not. Did you mention that your your budget will be asking for personnel to? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and then um, 
the number under total number of impounds slash specials, those are the UPT operations? That's correct. Okay, and are we are you not concentrating on those anymore? Or is that no, a staffing? No, it's more of a staffing issue as a former administrator Decker understands that since I have no hearing officer, I have to be the hearing officer. And as such, I've suspended that operation until I can get an actual full-time person doing that because of the amount of time that takes versus the amount of time that it takes for me to do other things. Gotcha. Um, and just a suggestion, although you may already know this, but um, during my time at the TA, um, I arranged for the NTA to help out on the administrative hearing side if necessary. I don't know if that's something you we we're working we're working better with them at this particular point, and that's something that I want to talk to them about. But I'll talk to the board about something dealing with that at a, <laughs> okay. in private in terms of some situations dealing with that. Okay. No questions. Any other questions on statistics or the administration? No questions. No questions. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you for the support. That will take us to agenda item five, which is public comment. This is a uh, time set forth on our agenda for members of the public who wish to address the board on matters within its jurisdiction. No action may be taken. And um, I see that uh, there may be somebody who wants to make public comments. Yeah. Thank you, George Gallivan, Desert Cab Company. Uh, I want to come up here to talk about uh, what the administrator just spoke about, which was the the revenue per trip. <clears throat> if you if you look at the revenue per trip statistics for September, which I think you have in front of you, it would be page three of eight on the September statistic. So for 2022, the revenue per trip. If, if you just glance down the 2022, you can see that most of the company's revenue per trip is about the same, give or take. <clears throat> if you were to look back before flat rates, there would, was much more discrepancy in there because we didn't have the flat rates. The reality is that close to 20%, a little over 20% of all trips come off of the airport. So when you introduce the flat rates, and that's off the airport. We don't do 20% back to the airport. For some reason, we only do probably about 15%, but that means 35 to 40% of all rides are flat rates. So when, when that happens and you have a flat rate for that many of the rides, everybody's revenue per trip is gonna get a lot closer. That's why that you see that now. <clears throat> because the airport has a, such a heavy influence, that if you look then, the reason I'm coming up here is, is that he, when he talked about Virgin Valley, Virgin Valley, if you look at the next page, which is page four of that report, which is the least revenue per trip, Virgin Valley is the highest one at $20.35. I can tell you from my experience that my desert cab company runs about 18% of its rides off of the airport. Virgin Valley, 100% lease, no employees. Desert has a little mix. The lease drivers, for, for at least my company, way overplay the airport. So for Virgin Valley, close, you know, 28%, 25, 26, I mean, high 20% of all rides are off the airport. So that flat, the cheapest flat rate now is $22, $23. So the reason that this is where it is, is because Virgin Valley, in my opinion, overplays the airport, but they're independent contractors. They're allowed to play, go wherever they want to go. And that is, you know, it's a, a for sure ride. They know what the rate is going to be, and they just play that airport over and over and over. So I believe lease drivers in general overplay the airport. And if you look at the average revenue per trip for lease drivers versus the other, which is the employee side, you're going to see it's higher because all the lease drivers play out there because it's just a for sure ride. So I just wanted to clarify that because this, again, is just the revenue per trip. It has nothing, zero in, in this number, has anything to do with credit cards. The, that 
that number is the total revenue we report to the TA, which is the extras, which is the airport, the book, the, the meter, and the excise tax. Nothing to do with the $3 is anywhere in any of this number. That's, that's not revenue. That's the, it's a separate number. So these, these is not, whether this was a cash ride or credit or card ride does not change this number. And I want the, the board to understand that. That has, none of this has to do with credit card fees. It has to do with the meter, airport, and excise tax. Excise tax doesn't change. The percentage of the airport is the only thing that changes this. You know, again, before flat rates, you could have seen a much bigger discrepancy in some of the numbers because if someone would argue a company that high flags a lot would have a lot longer rides, people that were using the tunnel because it weren't flat rates, that's why you saw bigger discrepancies. Some companies, their drivers played the strip, which were much smaller rides. I mean, there are a lot of different reasons, but so I just want to explain that. So theoretically, the more the more rides you do in a zone, the closer to the flat rate your revenue per trip should be, essentially. Say that again. Well, if you if you do 100% of your rides in zone one, then your revenue per trip is theoretically going to be equal to the that flat, flat rate. rate. To that flat rate, right? Yeah. Not, and there, obviously, there's multiple flat rates. Yeah. Right. And and again, some of the rides off the airport don't go into a zone. Some go downtown. Some go to the outlying areas. But but the reality is, is eight, five, ninety percent of them go into one of those zones. So that is why the, the the revenue per trip for the employee models has all kind of come together, and we're all within fifty cents of each other because the airport has such a big influence on it in flat rate tax. No questions. I have one question, and that is, there is an influence though for the fuel surcharge here. Absolutely. So, so some of this increase, which is hard to determine what portion of it is, the fact that there's a surcharge for fuel and that's moved around. For sure, because the flat rates went up a dollar. Yeah, right. And the mileage went up if it wasn't a flat rate. So absolutely, if you go look and see when the fuel surges were implemented and you look that the next month, it should have gone up, you know, 60 percent, 60 cents, 80 cents, whatever the average the average trip is little 3.8 miles so you can kind of do the map and you should be able to see that and, and you do if you look at when it happens and then the, the next month and it should go down it comes down as the fuel price comes down as the well as the tier comes off oh right? yeah as the surcharge comes down regardless of what's going on with the price of gas it has to do with when right. when our, our surcharge goes on or off right okay thank you very much one more oh, yeah. so would it be fair to say that in in the zones with the flat rate, the fare becomes more predictable, not only for the customer, but for the company. For sure. Okay. I, I mean, I think overall for the industry that the flat rates turned out to be a very good thing is, is an image to the public or something. I, I was one of the people that did not want the flat rate. I believe that the cab drivers that were cab drivers that were good salespeople could sell a longer ride like a like a waiter will upsell you to, oh, get an appetizer, get a, you know, I thought the good cab drivers that would grab somebody at the airport would say, hey, let's stop and get some alcohol. Let's go see the, the welcome to Bay sign. And, and th that allowed cab drivers to get a bigger fare. And, and, and that would increase revenue to them and to me. Mm -hmm. So I thought, knowing how many rides come off the, the airport, I thought that bringing it to the flat rate would change that competition for me and would bring it all these closer together, which it did. Um, but I think that the, it, my concern has been outweighed by the image that the industry has got. I think it's been better for the industry that, that we, that we do this, but I didn't, I didn't support the idea when it started. So is the, is the revenue being more predictable, at least in the zones, um, for the company? Is that a positive thing? Is that something that you, that I, 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 I don't really look at that. I think the cab drivers do. Okay. Yeah. I think a cab driver looks at it and says, I, I know what it is, and I need if I do ten of those, and they're twenty-two dollars a piece, I'm going to book two hundred twenty dollars. So yeah, I think that they kind of know what the business is and, and what's happening at the airport. And I think it came up in the other meetings. September was the busiest deplaning month in the history at, at McCarran, whatever it's called now, Harry Reid, or uh, you know, the, at the airport. So uh, I, I think that cab drivers in general kind of look at that and know it's a. Uh, Right, they're, they're they're not worried about getting a 
a ride from the Bellagio to the win and right. thinking it's six dollars of fighting traffic, they know they're gonna get twenty two bucks, twenty five bucks, whatever it is. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Seeing no other public comment. Oh, oh. Um, good morning, Katana Martinez, um, analyst for the Taxi Cab Authority. Um, I just wanted to note from yesterday's very insightful hearing, um, there was a lot of mention about 10,000 new drivers per year for Uber and Lyft drivers. I wanted to share, I guess, my personal um, opinion on the matter that um, it's it's kind of like just just that one statement um, from my experience with uh, monitoring the active drivers that we have on the road for the taxi cab authority. It's not quite the full picture. Being that, for example, when the administrator reports that we have approached 4,000 active drivers, and you all are well aware that it changes per day because permits expire, um, uh, there's terminations that happen with the companies, and so as that change, as their permit statuses change, th those numbers do change. And knowing that, um, for the statement to just say, well, there's 10,000 new drivers per year for Uber and Lyft drivers, but that does not really go to show how many, how much attrition rate they may have for their drivers at the moment or um, you know, terminations or whatever it is, or even as you've heard from industry, um, drivers switching over from Uber to Uber to becoming permanent taxi drivers. I wanted to just kind of put it out there because when you're dealing with big data like this, um, there's there are more details that completed the picture as a whole. And if we were to try to stay competitive, we should look into that and see if if that number is even proportionate to the number of active drivers that we are constantly um, putting out there right now for the tax cap authority. Um, that's all I have for public comment. Any other public comments? Seeing none, uh, we will be in adjournment if uh, there's no other business to come before. <laughs> Thank you.